Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Alcest Kodama, newest album from Alcest. Um, so yes, how to introduce this? Well, this is first time I've actually listened to a full album by Alcest. I know, Pierce, you've listened to them a bit more. Recommended to them, recommended to them by Dan a while ago, who was in our UN review. And I actually knew about them kind of via MSers, who are like part of the, well, they're basically the main person behind Alcest, also worked on that, which I knew. But I liked Amethyst and never really checked out Alcest for a while, I don't know why. But I picked up an album of theirs and really enjoyed it. So this is a new one that I just picked up as well, and yeah, so now we're reviewing it, because that's what we do on a review show, so I know. Funny that! <laughs> Yeah. Um, now, this is a post-metal album. Post-metal bits of black metal, post-rock, prog-rock. I identified bits of metalcore in there, which there's there's a bit of contention where that's concerned, but whatever. Um, so, anyone who has listened to previous reviews particularly the mono review, will know my opinion of post-metal. Unfortunately, that opinion has not been changed by this album. Yeah, it's not your kind of thing, I think. Mm. Meanwhile, for me, it is a very, very big thing, because I really like post-metal. Now, that's not to say that there aren't tracks on the album I'd like, but for the most part, I just got bored by the album. <clears throat> hmm, because if you're not, you know, the thing is, post metal is a very kind of specific niche, it seems. Hmm. Some people really like it, some people really don't. It's just a case of whether A, you're in the right kind of mood for it, or B, whether you'll ever be in the right kind of mood. Yeah, and I think this kind of confirms for me that post metal just isn't my bag. Um, there are odd songs here and there that I'll enjoy from post metal bands, but. Overall, I I find myself just going, it's all right. They're technically competent, but this does nothing for me. But you just yeah, you just don't really have any attraction to it, yes. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the ultimate. Now, here's the thing: I kind of gauge it on a I'd rather be annoyed by a song than bored by a song, because if you're annoyed you can actually engage with it in some way. You might even be able to say why you're annoyed by it. If you're bored... If you have a particular part, you can go, this bit in particular, this bit here can fuck right off. Mm. Like what we had with... Um, oh, Quite a few reviews. Hurt comes to mind. Yeah, with Hurt and how that album just really annoyed us both. And... Um, we should get back to doing the rest of that stuff, but hey. Yeah. Well, there's only like one or two albums left, so it's not going to be difficult. Um, but yeah, uh, like we had with Baby Metal and the two Dragon Force a songs, which is sort of like, FUCK THIS SONG! <laughs> and, um, oh, Believe. How you absolutely despise that song. I mean, I don't like it. Don't get me wrong, but you! It's just a perfect example of everything that could possibly go wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I find... I... Well, in this case, it's kind of... Yeah, you can tell that it's technically good music, it's just not the kind of music you want. Yeah. Um, I mean, the two tracks which I did actually enjoy were Untouched and Onyx. Now... Of course, in your case, Onyx was the last track, so... Yeah, because I only had the regular edition, because the only copy they had in stock was the regular edition. I, in fact, didn't even notice there was a special edition until I sorted it up. Yeah. Um, the version I've got has a... There's six tracks on the normal version, seven on the version I got. Apparently there's eight on another version. Yeah, I've heard there's a kind of... I think it might be a vinyl exclusive track. Yeah. It's quite common these days. Yeah. But we'll just cover the six that both of us have, and I'll very briefly touch upon... Well, 
we've changed format to just cover the highlights and say what our opinions on the album are. Um, But anything regarding the seventh track, um, I'll just say, if you include the seventh track, I did enjoy that as well. um, The seventh track is called Notre Sang et Nos Pensées. Apologies to anyone who knows French. I learnt Spanish and German to a certain extent, so... I am no better at French, so... Seeing as it's a French band, they have a right to use French titles, but it doesn't mean I can pronounce damn things. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know what Alceste means. Uh, I actually don't know if it even means anything. Uh, I wouldn't like to say. Um... I mean, some bands, it's sort of like, what does that even mean? And it's, I mean, like, um, Chumbawamba. <laughs> That's true. I don't know what that means either. It probably has a meaning. It doesn't. I mean, it, doesn't it? They've given, like, a dozen t- different explanations for what it means, but what it ultimately means is bugger all. <laughs> When you're looking up Alsace on Google, it doesn't seem to give any results really apart from the band, so presumably it isn't actually a word. Yeah. Um... But, as I have mentioned probably on quite a few occasions, and obviously with our mono review as well, I really friggin' like post-rock and post-metal. Hmm. So, I mean, some of my favourite bands, like City of the Static, one of my like, top ten favourite bands, and they're straight up post-rock. So, Cult of Luna are another one of my top, probably top five artists in their post-metal, so... I'm not going to be doing a review of it, because it's ages ago, but the new cut of the new album, Moduli Christmas, is really damn good, and you should listen to it. But that's not part of this topic, so... <laughs> Just got it recently as well. But yeah, uh, obviously being a fan of post-metal, and also kind of shoegazy style stuff, I mean, us is quite often referred to as black gaze, which is because it's you know, a combination of shoegaze and black metal, but it's kind of a weird thing to say. But I guess I can see where they're coming from with that. Uh, I just want to say, black gaze just sounds like the most pretentious term... Uh, it still sounds less pretentious than post music. What the what the fuck does post music even mean? I don't know. Ask the band that used it. I can't remember the name of them right now because I haven't actually listened to them much myself. It's more interesting idea. But the fact they actually declassified it as post music, I I didn't even know. So whichever band it was that did that, screw you. <laughs> I I'm just going to see if I can find this because what the fuck does post music mean? I can find post industrial music, post punk, post hardcore. Um. Post-tonal music theory, what the fuck? Post-metal, of course, but post-grunge. Post-music, just, post-music is just kind of the ultimate in that kind of trend of t- genres that don't actually mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, kind of, it kind of, it kind of says the, the kind of concept and word uses they've got doesn't make any good damn sense, but they've essentially become so refined and commonly used that it does still have a meaning, I guess. But could you not use a less pretentious name for such things? I mean, let's face it, there is a genre called noise, and it does exactly what it says on the tin. So... Yeah, noise is noise, really. Yeah. And it's sort of like, yeah, I get what you're saying with this. You're doing exactly what you're saying. You're creating music that's noise. That is a straightforward... Mm-hmm. All there is to say, really. Yeah. Um, uh, on the matter of sort of being into post metal, um, Cult of Luna is for me sort of an exception to the rule because I do enjoy their stuff, but they are sort. Of... I would be interested to see what your opinion of the Cult of Luna Julie Christmas collaboration album is actually. Mm-hmm. It's a very very good album, but Julie Christmas is the vocalist of Made Out of Babies and other post rock band called Battle of Mice. That only released one album. Mm-hmm. So they kind of brought her on board for the new Cut Luna album, and she's got a very unique kind of voice when it comes to her singing, screaming, growling, whispering, whatever the hell she's designed to at the time. So it'll be interesting to see what your opinion is on that. Fair do. Well, I said it came out in April, so we can't like, do a, an up-to-date review of it. Mm. Well, we can. that'll be for the year-end review when we're going over... Oh dear God, so many albums. As I mentioned the other day, Cut of Luna's uh, Journey Christmas is actually a central album of the year for me. Again, so is this album, so... <laughs> There's so many albums. I need to. So, on, I've been listening to Kodama a few times now. I think it's probably still slightly below the previous album that I've heard by them, which is, if I can correctly, Ecale de Lune. It's French, so I, I haven't had to pronounce a bloody thing. 
I haven't actually heard some of their other albums because they had a couple of albums since then. But that's the other album where there's like got, and I think that's probably a slightly better album. Mm-hmm. Once again, if you don't like this because of the kind of sound they're using, then it's quite similar. So. Uh. But I think Kodama's a pretty damn good album, personally. I mean, I, I like a lot of things in it. I think the only one thing that doesn't really stand to me is Oisu de Prey, or whatever the fuck the pronunciation is of that. Oisu de Prey, or something like that. Oh, yeah. There's, I can remember like listening through the other songs, but that song just didn't really stick with me very much. Just just as a by the by, Echo de Lune is Moon Scales. Mm, I think you mentioned that before. Well, uh... I, I mentioned that Lune is Moon. I don't know that much. Well, it's not a periphery review. <laughs> um, I mean, I know it's it's kind of an obvious one because Loon, Luna, Luna, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the interesting thing to note is the last couple of albums. I think it's the last couple. It might be to be the last one. But the kind of screaming vocals that the main guy Nije does, he hasn't actually used them for a few albums. So this is the first album in a while that he's come back and he started using those kind of screamed black metal list vocals. Fair dues. So, yeah, I, th- I think what it comes down to is, and I'm sure I'll get a few enemies as a consequence of saying about this, but um, it puts me in mind of Opeth, and I can't stand Opeth. <laughs> well, on the hand, I rather well, enjoy Opeth, so it's not unnatural that I'd like this as well. But I haven't really cared that much for the more recent stuff by Opeth, but the first like seven or eight albums I rather enjoy, so... Whichever one, all the way up to probably Watershed was the last one I actually enjoyed. That's, what, like, eighth or ninth album? Something like that. Yeah, I don't know. So. I don't know the numbers of most bands' albums, really. Ninth, I just looked up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the reason I enjoy Untouched and Onyx um, is because they put me in mind of bands like um, Paradise Lost and Anathema. Hmm. I can see the similarities there, and also, I'm also a fan of both of those bands as well. Oh, and Athema more so than Paradise Lost, but I do like both of them. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely love both those bands, so it's sort of like, yeah, okay, you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> these songs will get my attention because they put me in mind of bands I love. How many of you have used this now where we've heard, this song reminds us of Anathema? It's probably like the third or fourth. <laughs> yeah, it's... You can get as soon as something reminds us of Anathema, we're like, we must mention it, reminds us of Anathema, because Anathema are really damn good. I, I think... Uh, we're going to need to check when Anathema next brings out an album, because obviously, it's like with Metallica, we we keep mentioning them, so we need to review an album. Well, yeah, in both of my cases, Anathema is one of my favourite bands, so... I, I mean, uh, let's see. Could be relatively soon. Let's see... We're going back, while you're looking it up, uh, in regards to Kodama, I think the tracks that stand out to me most are probably Occlusion, Untouched, and Kodama itself. Mm-hmm. It's going to get a long kind of, kind of build-up kind of style thing going on, which I guess... Uh, the thing is, I think I like about post-rock, and some other post-hardcore kind of post bands like, say, Devil Soul is Soul, or um, something like Square Cast, like that, it's kind of... The kind of guitar tones they use. Mm-hmm. Coffee, you can't really hear that individual note, so it's just a kind of constant wave of sound. And if it's done well, it just sounds really, really good to me. Mm-hmm. It's quite a common thing in a kind of post rock, post metal, post hardcore, stuff like that. Yeah. I suppose this problem I have with some bands is it's kind of just, it sounds like got guitar wanking. In this case, it sounds like someone's just constantly, a constant state of rapid wanking, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of sound which. It kind of envelops you. That's the best way to describe it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what bugs me is when I'm listening to an album, I kind of need a very, you know, something to just grab me in the first few notes. Uh, mm. Like, if you think... Um, uh, just trying to think through some of the albums that we've reviewed. Like, with Faith No More and... Hmm. The opening track, a solid Victus, isn't it? I think the opening track. Um, yes. I think the title track is the first song as well. Um, oh god. Being so. Hmm. Yeah, I was just confirming that the title track is the first track. Yeah. And um, with garbage, that you know, the way those f- opening tracks start is sort of for me, it was a real 
you know, chill down the spine kind of feeling. And that's what I need a lot of the time. And the thing is, post-metal, whilst I like build-up songs, I, I kind of balk at build-up songs that are right at the start of the album. Yeah, I can see that. And um, things post punk and post metal is that's literally the entire purpose of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I this album for me, I, I find myself at odds because it's not a terrible album, but it's not an album for me. So I personally cannot think of how I could, with our typical ratings, it's sort of like, a, how do I rate this? Because, on the one hand, it is, technically speaking, a good, solid album. But on the other hand, I do not like it. Well, I think this is kind of the, the best the way to describe this is, I guess, it's not a bad album. I just don't like it. <laughs> mm. I think rate the easiest way to resolve rating, might as well give it a rating, because I don't have that much to say on the album. It's not like with other albums where I can just reel off highlights here and there and everywhere. I mean, I'm having difficulty remembering the songs. That's how bored I was. <laughs> Which is very similar to what you said with Mono as well. Yeah. Um, but in terms of ratings, it's sort of a personal rating that's too eh out of five. And competency, technical rating, you know the quality of the album as a showcasing of the skills of the musicians and the vocalist, that would be a 4 out of 5. I think it's kind of situations like this is going to go to if you have to separate you know, a critical rating from a personal rating. Yeah. So, and the only problem it has when it comes to doing reviews and things like this is it's a lot of those, this kind of happens more often with kind of this kind of Bruce Rock kind of style stuff, is it's a lot easier to actually experience it than it is to actually explain it. Yes. It's kind of music that's designed in a way to be listened to rather than talked about. It was just me being incompetent at being a reviewer, I don't know. <laughs> but I would recommend listening to it. Whilst I'm not a fan of the album, I would recommend giving it a listen, if simply to see whether it's your su su ah, if simply to see whether it's your kind of music. Hmm. And as for if you you already know you like kind of post rock, if you're just fans of say yeah bands like God of Luna, bands Six Five Eight Static, previous Alcest albums, you'll probably enjoy this quite a lot because okay. it definitely stands up compared to the one other Alcest album I've heard and enjoyed. So, in personal rating, I probably would give it four point five because mm -hmm. you no, know, it's a good album and it's the kind of thing I like. So yeah, um, yeah, not really much more to say. Uh, you know, it's very difficult to talk about an album you barely remember. <laughs> and I I only listened to it an hour ago. You're tired then you want to go to bed? Huh? You're tired then you want to go to bed? <laughs> I'm missing the reference here. I listened to it an hour ago and I'm tired and I want to go to bed. Oh. <laughs> Thinking, oh, so they're going to show me a way to go home with this. Especially after talking about post music earlier. Hmm. Um. Now this is a weird thing, just as a closer, I would say I'm much more of a post-rock fan than post-metal. Well, they're kind of similar kind of bases, I guess, but with different aesthetics, I guess? Well, aesthetic isn't the right word for it. Well, post-metal post -metal uses the, you know, distortion drives and all that sort of thing that normal metal uses, whereas post-rock is much more based in the, um, oh, what's the term for it, uh, the tritone, you know, the devil's note. Well, post-rock seems to be quite often a lot more kind of ambient and floaty, I guess. Also, you're less likely to have growled vocals if that's not your kind of thing. Post-metal does have a lot of that. Yeah, I mean, some bands I like the growled vocals of, I mean, as I said, I love Paradise Lost, and when they were first starting out, they had a lot of growled vocals, and still do some. <laughs> Same with Anathema. Um, and I like a lot of death metal. I'm not so much of a fan of black metal, though. So that's where I get into the, you know, I like screaming vocals as opposed to growled vocals. Although, again, another band that does a lot of growling vocals is Samael. 
I would call Samael probably a black metal. I would say Samael is is one of those metal bands that it's very difficult to pin down. I've already heard the one album by them, but yeah. I've heard a lot of their music, so. But yeah, I'm, the one thing that does come to mind when I think Samael is black metal, so well, it's like one word, but. Well, they're, they're defined, the genres it has on their Wikipedia page are industrial metal, black metal, symphonic metal, and electronic metal, all of which I would say are actually accurate. Yeah. It's one of the few I, times that... I kind of mix up also makes me think of a Demi Borgia, actually, but... Um, some of their albums are closer to Demi Borgia than others. Um, Worship Him being a key one. Uh... Because Aeonix is the only album there I've actually heard. Mm. Really good album. But anyway, getting sidetracked. As usual. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, as I say, whilst I'm not a fan of the album, give it a listen, see what you think. And if you like it, go and in- investigate more post metal. Go for it. I'm all for exploring new music, so definitely. It's always good. Yeah. And so many genres out there. So many of them now that we're just deciding, or we can't actually think of proper names of them, so we can call ourselves post music kind of level. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely give it a listen to, uh, regardless of whether or not you like the genre, because it is, as I said, it is at least competently done. More competently done than this show, at least. Although that's not <laughs> difficult. But hey, it's what we do because we can. Mm. And because you want to, so. Yeah. Um, the only thing left to say is at some point in the next few weeks we're going to be doing a sort of compilation review of albums that we wanted to cover in September but because of time constraints and all that sort of thing we didn't get (laughs) yeah well there were like 30 albums we wanted to review but because you were constantly scheduled for work on the days that we could do the reviews it was sort of like ah shit that is not going to change anytime soon yeah I'm doing six days this week for trouble yeah (laughs) I mean we're just lucky that we've got you for today yeah it's rather convenient to have today but anyway uh, we'll probably next review will probably be the compilation review because there's a lot of albums I want to cover there's like there's Meatloaf Nick Cave um oh two of them huh <laughs> all two of them you just listed uh Tarja um Lindsay Sterling I was going we were going to review but at the time I was not feeling at all up to it but well, there's also Katie Tunstall, there's Warpaint, there's new Mono coming out, which is probably better if we don't do a full review on that, considering what happened this time. Yeah. Uh, the Ghost just came out, I've got a copy of that there, I don't miss it. So, um, yeah, that's quite a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, albums that have recently come out, we will just do a normal review. Albums from last month, we'll do in the compilation review, because there's so many albums that we want to cover that it's sort of like, okay, we've just... I mean, we only we were only able to cover one album from last month, and that was Devin Townsend, and that was several weeks late. So, I, I think we just shunt everything into one compilation review, and... We should call it the Clusterfuck Review, TM. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's it for this episode. Next episode will either be the new Ghost album, or the compilation review Uh, so that's goodbye from me and goodbye from me